This is George from High Tech Legion. Today we're going to take a look at the new GTX 660 from EVGA, which is a superclocked edition. The GeForce GTX 660 is the newest edition in NVIDIA's lineup. It is built off the new GK106 GPU. Uh, the 106 is obviously going to be a different GPU than we've been seeing in the 680, 670, 660 Ti, the GK104. But the GK106 does retain a lot of the features of the GK104. Uh, the GK106 still uses GPU boost for dy uh, dynamic clocking, the NVIDIA SMX engine, adaptive vertical sync, surround technology, etc. And of course it is physics uh, ready, 3D vision ready, SLI capable, and of course uses CUDA technology. Uh, the GK106 has 960 CUDA cores and a memory bandwidth of 192-bit. Uh, now, taking a look at the EVGA specimen, EVGA has come out right out, right out of the gates with the Superclocked Edition. The Superclocked Edition raises the base clock up to 1046 MHz and the boost clock up to 1111 MHz, with also a boost on the memory clock to 6008 effect, uh, MHz effective. The EVGA Superclocked itself, very nice looking unit. As you can see, EVGA, as always, is using the reference design cooler and um, the reference outer shield. However, it's been modified. As you can see, it's got a nice carbon fiber faux finish on the top with the EVGA logo in the middle of the squirrel cage fan. Nice silver trim up top with the EVGA logo and the GF460 uh, on the top. Going over to the side, get a look at silver trim. G46, uh, GTX 660 and EVGA logo over on the side that's going to be facing out, so it's going to look good in the case. If you take a look, one 6-pin connector is all the 660 requires. It doesn't require two 6-pins, no 8-pins, just one 6-pin. It is a very, very efficient card. It is really aimed at the gamer's sweet spot, uh, where you're going to get the best mix of performance, efficiency, and uh, price point. Also, uh, interesting thing, the GTX 660 is aimed for the 1080p gamer, not uh, multiple monitor, not for larger monitors. It's going to deliver best possible performance at 1080p. Going on, you can see that the reference design actually extends the board. The board itself is quite small, only comes to here, this being all cooler with the fan right here. Nice thing about this being, it makes the board very very rigid. There's absolutely no way for the board to flex. This of course is very important for longevity in the board and continued best performance. Taking a look, another nice touch. SLI actually has a rubber cover that goes over it. Not only protects it, but makes it pretty nice looking as well. Heading over, PCI Express 3.0 connector. Of course backwards compatible to PCI Express 2.0. Up top, as we saw, squirrel cage fan. Over on the side, We've got two DVI connectors, as well as DisplayPort and HDMI, which come with plugs from the factory, once again, keep the dust out, as well as get a little bit better looking if you're not using them. Rear is vented. It is a two-slot GPU. Quick look at the accessories. You get one PCI 6-pin to two 4-pin Molex adapter a DVI to VGA adapter, in case you are going to be using a uh, VGA monitor. This will only plug into the uh, DVI-I, not into the DVI-D on the rear of the GPU. You've got powered by EVGA pin, metal, with adhesive on the back, display driver, installation disc, Warning about connecting the power before starting it up. PCI 3.0 ready sheet, quick start guide, and complete user guide. With the GTX 660, NVIDIA is promising a really hard hit at what is the sweet spot of the gamer's market at the $229 price point. EVGA is really taking it one better. They're coming out of the gate with the Superclocked Edition, uh, bringing the boost clock up to 1,111 megahertz.
So it's overclocked right off the bat for superior performance. Uh, they are coupling that with a three-year warranty out of the box, which can be upgraded to five or ten years upon registration at the website. And they're also uh, bundling in, of course, EVGA's cust uh, award-winning customer service. Uh, you really won't see anything like EVGA as far as customer service. And also their step-up program, which is really fantastic. The uh, GK106 really doesn't lose anything uh, from the 104 in terms of features. You are going to lose some CUDA cores, but still, for a 1080p gamer, the GK106 is really going to be just about perfect. And EVGA really just takes it one step better.